Tim Panasic for Gibbons Motor Toys. Today we're going to be discussing another one of our Coastal Express boats. And this is the biggest of them all. This is our 28 foot. So like we did with our 24 foot, and I would encourage you to watch that video as well, because there's a lot of parallels between the, the series of boats. So the 2825, as I said, it's the largest and it forms what's called the largest of our Coastal Express series which is the 23, 26, and 28, which have the forward sloping windshield is the primary difference. The 22 and the 24 Escape series have the rear sloping windshield being the primary difference along with a drop bow, which we'll talk about more as we go along. So all of these boats have a lot of common denominators between them. The way that they're built is very similar. The primary difference between the 24, 26, and 28 is that they have an eight and a half inch beam, eight and a half foot beam. The 22 and the 23 have an eight foot beam. As far as the structure is concerned, they're all very similar. They all come standard with a 0.125 sides and 190 bottom, although we have an optional quarter inch bottom, which is the way we spec most of our boats. As far as our reverse chines and how Kingfisher builds these boats, all very similar. You'll notice that we have a, a formed reverse chine that goes right from the bow to the stern and that runs the entire length. And that's not added afterwards, that's actually formed in the hull when the hull is being built. Same with the lifting strikes, they're strategically placed so that it gives you the best performance. Best performance meaning it gets the boat up on step quickly keeps it there at lower speeds and improves lift. Another option that uh, is pretty popular is the heavy duty rub rail. We talked about this with the 24 foot boat. We'll go over it again here. The way the boats are measured are a little bit different. So I just want to help clarify that confusion. The 23, 26, and 28, which is the forward sloping windshield the pilot house designed, are measured from the engine bracket to the bow. The 22 and 24 foot escape series are measured from the transom to the bow. So therefore our 26 coastal and our 24 escape are actually pretty much identical in length. Another difference separating the 22 and 23, besides they have a six inch narrower beam, they are a little bit shallower, still very good, capable big water boats. However, the option of a head with a holding tank is not available on the 22 and 23, only on the 24, 26 and 28. So another thing to consider when you're looking at the differences in these models. Okay, as far as power choices on the Coastal series, basically the smallest rated horsepower is gonna be our 22 and 23, which have a maximum rated horsepower of 250. That boat works good with 200, two and a quarter or a 250 horse. The 24 and 26 have a horsepower rating of 300. Those boats you can put uh, twin engines on. We can actually do twin engines on the 22 and 23 as well. That'd be twin 115s. The 2020, 2024 and the 24, or 26, 25 and the 24, 25, you can uh, again, maximum 300 horsepower on a single, or you could put twin 150s on there or really anything in between. As far as the 28, 25, it's rated for 400 horsepower. In this particular application, this has got the maximum horsepower. It's got twin 200s along with a 15 horse kicker. Some that's also important to note is that both in fact, all these boats have a lot of flexibility in terms of power. This one may have the maximum power, but this boat works excellent as an example with a single 350. A single 250 would work well on this boat. Twin 150s will actually work really well on this boat. We've sold these boats with those configurations. We do have specifications on that that you can ask us for at any time. The bottom line is there's a lot of flexibility with power options. The hull responds really well to a number of different choices there. Okay, standing on the aft deck of the 2825, this is gonna be virtually identical to the 2425 that we did. So you can refer to that video for some more details. This has got basically the same door, the same roof overhang that we talked about there. It's got the walkthrough step, which again is a unique feature. And as far as the easy clean floor, the fish holding tanks, the, the easy clean uh, pump outs, the trays, 
all that stuff was discussed in detail on the 2425 video, so we'll let you refer to that one there. Okay, again, the interior, very similar to the 2425 that we did in detail. The difference is this boat does have a whack of accessories in it, which we're gonna do a separate video on. So we'll get to all the accessories that you see in here later. But as far as just a quick overview is concerned, 42 inch bench seats, it's got a flush head on the one side with a privacy curtain. It's got uh, dual drink holders in each one of those bench seats there. This does convert to a bed. It's got the shockwave pedestal seats along with our river masters. Basically the difference here though, we'll point this out because unlike the drop bow and the rear sloping windshield of the 2425, here's what you get in the interior of the coastal series being the 23, 26 and 28 is it does give you a little bit more room here because of the forward sloping windshield. What your compromise is, is that you don't have a walking windshield to get to your deck. However, you can walk around the cabin. What you gain is you gain, of course, the storage that you would normally have a limited space for storage underneath here. Now you can actually sleep a small person up here or take advantage of just more really good dry storage. There's also storage underneath here as well. So this is quite a spacious area. And then in front of that hen room there is the uh, anchor road storage. The other thing that's different in the, uh, in the 23, 26, 28 series with the pilot house design is the dash. Instead of the traditional glove box here, what you end up with is these drink holders. And then basically you got all this dash storage space that runs along in this configuration. So similar, but different. Okay, so we'll talk about a few of the accessories that we've installed on this boat. As you can see, this has got the drum winch. You can either do a windlass or a drum on any one of the CXPs. The drum is obviously a very nice feature. It's a little bit more money, but uh, they seem to be getting much more popular. This boat's also shorn with the offshore bow rail, which is quite nice. As you can see, you can be out here in rough water and you got the safety of the offshore rail. So what we've done on the roof of this boat is this uh, customer uh, chose to get a custom built, full-sized roof uh, carrier, as you can see here. So that's uh, totally an option. This has got our scan strut mount. So basically that uh, gives you your radar mounting position. We have an external GPS antenna here. We've got dual antennas mounted. You got rod holders in the back, and of course you got the stainless rails all the way around with tie down points here as well that are welded to the roof of the cabin. As well, we talked about this in the 24 video, you notice that we've got basically a gutter. So this drip tray keeps that water from running into your windows when they're open. And it's designed so that the water will actually run and drain off towards the rear of the cabin so that it keeps everybody dry. With our scan strut mount, we also have our sea station autopilot antenna. So that uh, gives the autopilot. And in this particular case, we have joystick steering in here, which we'll show you after, but that's where that antenna is located. Another optional feature, which uh, most people really enjoy is this net holder that you see. Put the butt of the net here, put the net on that side. It's quick, easy. As everybody knows, net is always in the way. This is a way to keep it out of the way, yet quick, easy access when you need it in a hurry. Okay, so with our auxiliary aft helm here, this boat's a fairly elaborate. What we've got is we've got dual controls. So with those twin 200s, we've got dual digital controls here. We've got separate controls for the 15 horse kicker. This is our joystick steering, and this is the autopilot functions. So basically you got the very same functions here as you do in the main helm. You've also got stop start buttons here. So you can start, stop, do everything you want right here at the rear helm without having to go to your front helm. You've got your Simrad right here as well. So basically a really well laid out uh, aft helm. And like the 24, 25, more storage. In this case, we've also got a fuel tank here for the diesel heater. And it also gives us provisions for a speaker here. There's also a speaker there. We've got speakers in the interior. We'll get there in a minute.
So we'll just show you a few more accessories that are in here. This has got a, quite a stereo system in it. Stereo is controlled from that panel right there. There's two subs in here, six speakers. You can see where we've put some amps in the storage box right here. This also has an automatic espresso coffee machine. So it grinds the beans. It, uh, I'm told it does everything. I don't drink coffee, so I can't tell you anything more, but apparently this is, uh, this is the real machine. As far as the interior lights, we've added uh, this control panel here. So we can literally change these colors, colors of lights to whatever we want. We can control all the zones there. We've got uh, two 12 inch uh, Simrads here, as you can see. You can also control the stereo through those as well as the stereo panel. This is the control for the heater. It's got a Vessel View 5, which is part of the Mercury system. Your trim tabs, again, digital throttle and shift controls here, and your Optimus uh, 360 steering with joystick. Behind that, we've also installed an AC panel with an 1800 watt inverter. So there's really no end to what you can put in any of these boats. The nice part about it is we've actually got room to add all these things. On top of all the Burnwin mounts that you can see here, which there's other videos that we've done just featuring uh, Burnwin. I, just to give you an idea again, real quick, simple, easy to use. Really heavy duty and robust is the nice part about the Burnwin stuff. This customer also elected for a custom uh, fish cleaning station. So a quick way to bleed and gut your fish and keep all the mess going overboard. This is also removable. So it mounts on these Burnwin rod holders back here. You can also mount this on the side gunnels. It's gonna fit wherever you wanna put it.